Uh, my name is Ying Wei Lam. I'm a vascular surgeon at Johns Hopkins Hospital. Uh, I treat patients with all facets of vascular disease, including carotid disease, uh, peripheral arterial disease, arterial aneurysms, uh, vein disease, hemodialysis access, and thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, one of my f areas of expertise is in thoracic outlet syndrome. Because it, I did all my training here at Johns Hopkins Hospital, I had the privilege of working with Dr. Freischlapp, uh, who trained me in the field of thoracic outlet surgery. Thoracic outlet syndrome is a compressive syndrome that happens in the thoracic outlet area, which is located right here. The neurovascular structures that supply the arm and the hand can be compressed sometimes in this area that is bounded by the collarbone, the first rib, and some people, a cervical rib, and a couple of different muscles that border the uh, thoracic outlet area. Thoracic outlet syndrome is diagnosed depending on what structure has been compressed. If the septum vein is compressed, then the patient will present with a blood clot or otherwise known as a DVT. During such instances, the patient will have a swollen arm and sometimes even bluish discoloration of the entire arm. Uh, if, the thoracic, if the structure that's been compressed is the subclavian artery, sometimes patients will develop an aneurysm, which can be diagnosed on an ultrasound or CAT scan. And also sometimes patients will have symptoms of abnormalities in their hands uh, due to embolic disease. The most difficult diagnosis is when the uh, thoracic outlet area compresses the uh, brachial plexus or the nerve in that area. Uh, this happens in about 90-95% of all thoracic outlet syndrome diagnoses and can be difficult to diagnose. And often patients have a long-standing history of pain. There are many kinds of tests that need to be done in a patient with thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, and it also depends on what kind of compression structures are being involved in the disease. If the subclavian vein is compressed and we suspect a DVT, the patient should go to an IAC accredited vascular lab and get an ultrasound as a first step. If the compression is the subclavian artery, the first step can also often be a uh, color duplex ultrasound in the IAC accredited vascular lab. If it's a neogenic thoracic outlet syndrome that we're dealing with, then there are many other tests that have to be done. Uh, we also do a vascular lab study on these patients because we feel that it can be predictive or suggestive uh, of thoracic outlet syndrome if there's compression in that area. The treatment options for thoracic outlet syndrome depend on what structure has been compressed. If it's a vein or the artery being compressed, usually the treatment is surgical and the patient will have to undergo an operation for that. If the uh, diagnosis is compression of the nerves uh, in thoracic outlet syndrome, then the treatment can be uh, tailored to the patient. Quite often, we first start with physical therapy, and if that's su successful, then that's great. The patient can be cured that way. Uh, if it's not successful, then we have other tests uh, to take care of the patient and diagnose and confirm the diagnosis of thoracic outlet syndrome, before which we will recommend either injections or surgery as a form of treatment. Uh, we tend to like to do an operation that goes through the armpits with an incision about this long. Uh, the operation takes anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half, and patients typically go home uh, within 24 hours. Typically, I tell patients that they're going to feel a little bit sore for a couple of days after surgery, but within the first one or two weeks, people should feel comfortable getting to do things that they used to do. I always warn patients not to do any heavy lifting for several months after surgery, uh, when we also start physical therapy about two weeks after surgery. I've taken care of patients who are professional athletes in the collegiate level. Uh, patients usually are able to get back doing the uh, activities that they used to do, especially if they're young and healthy. Uh, it's very important that they do physical therapy after the operation so that their recovery is smooth and uh, they do not form scar tissue in the area of where the bone used to be. Thoracic outlet syndrome can be a tricky diagnosis sometimes and sometimes if patients have recurrence of the symptoms it's because the diagnosis was probably not the right one in the first place. However, if the compression is due to the subclavian artery or vein being compressed by the thoracic outlet area and we operate for that reason, uh, this is very unlikely to recur. One of the most rewarding things that I like to achieve when I take care of patients with thoracic outlet syndrome is to see my patients get back doing the activities, activities that they used to be doing. Of 
the top of my head, I can think of one patient that used to uh, have such debilitating symptoms that she couldn't continue her classes in college. And almost right after surgery, she was able to go back to school. Another player had such debilitating symptoms that he couldn't play hockey, which he loved a lot. And after the surgery, within six months, he was back playing hockey again. Johns Hopkins is a great place to get treated for thoracic outlet syndrome because we have established protocols starting from the clinic visit, to the vascular lab, to the operating room, and in your recovery. We have established physical therapy protocols that we have prescribed to hundreds of patients, and we know that it works well that way. Thank you.